helps it. Does that make sense? Yes. Visualizing? Okay, mm -hmm. great. So from there then, let's just do the last couple. Um, oh, I have one left here. Well, that's good. So oh, that's a cool yoga pose. I have I have the the last um, well we have the medial muscles that we also have to talk about but the sartorius the inside. the inside ones yeah we have front muscle back muscles inside muscles the outside is is the IT band really that's sort of the outside the compartment there uh, but the sartorius is kind of a goofball it's a very interesting muscle it starts at the ASIS and it moves down and goes all the way into the tibia down in here with a few other muscles but it lays on top of all these things and goes across it and what it does if you think of it contracting it does this it brings up the tibia it turns it inward a little bit but it also brings up the hip a little bit and so it does all these little assisting muscles it flexes and laterally rotates and abducts the femur whoa that's bringing it up turning it out and bringing it out to the side on the femur and then it flexes and immediately internally turns the tibia. Yeah. A lot of motions. The name Sartorius means tailor. And so, you know, the way I remember all those motions, I cross over my leg to the other knee, and that's that motion. Mm -hmm. That's a, you don't have to know all these different words. You just know that the crossing the knee, to the, the ankle to the knee motion is the Sartorius motion. But I like the name. And again, that's the pain area, that's the excess. It's a superficial muscle, so you don't, don't know. I don't have too many trigger points I do in there. And then we get to the inside muscles. So guess what motion they will be doing? What do you think? Pull the thigh out to the side or bring it back to the center? Bring it back to the center. Bring it back to the center, right? So they're attached on the inside, inside thigh and they go as close to the midline of the body as possible. That means some of them go to the front, the pubic bone, and some of them go to the back, to the sit bone. So they have then both force for going a little bit to the front, a little bit to the back and bring that thigh in. Mm -hmm. Does that mean, that's a lot of stabilization. If you run, let's do college football, you run zigzag. That's a lot of these muscles that you need to have really active. Yep. And so these are really strong muscles as well, the adductors. We have an adductor brevis, we have an adductor longus, and we have an adductor magnus. We even actually even have an adductor minimus. When we look at the action, it's hip adduction. The origin, oh look at that, I made a mistake. The origin is the ray, or I didn't complete it, it's the ramus of the pubis, but I deleted out <laughs> the ischial tuberosity. So here, write down ischial tuberosity as well. Mm -hmm. Or sit bone, if you forgot that. All right, so that's where these bones, these muscles go. The pectineus is the first one. Oh, yeah, we have we have two more. We have two that aren't called adductors. I'm sorry. One is called gracilis. One is called pectineus. Hmm. The pectineus is the first one. It's right here. Goes from the top of the pubic bone and goes right into the back. They all go sort of to the back. A lot of them to the linea aspera in the back. Okay. Mm -hmm. Look at these. They're all linear spare. Mm -hmm. And then we have the adductor brevis and longus. They are right here. The longus is right here. And the brevis is actually underneath it. They both attach in the front of the pubic bone and go into the linear aspera. Okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, look. I wrote it down. Never mind. Because then we go to here. This is what I did. I actually did do it. We have the origin of these next two muscles. The, the latter two, now on the sit bone. The adductor magnus, magnus means massive. That's a huge muscle. Look at the yellow. That's all magnus. Oh, yeah, that is cool. It's all there. It's just overlaid by some other one. Yeah. And so that's big. So that's the linea aspera. And then also we have a little tubercle here, little bump here. That's called the adductor tubercle. When you actually, I don't know if I have it on the, on the femur, but that's what that means. And then the last one is the gracilis. And you can see the blue, the green one here real nice, right? As it goes from top to bottom. That one starts at the ischial tuberosity, the sit bone, and that one goes down all the way to the tibia. Mm -hmm. And actually, it comes together 
and reaches together with the with the um, with with the hamstring into that area. There's a few that go into that area together. The sartorius also. So they call this area, all this here. That a lot of people get pain here because it pulls. Then these muscles pull. These three muscles. They call that the pes anserine. The pes anserine. Yeah. It's just an area. I know these weird names, but you just have to hear them a few times and not be too overwhelmed or write them down. And that's why we try when we do, you know, in this section, you have the lists, the term lists to make sure it's not too much information that you focus on studying. Okay, so that is this le nid. Now let's go to the lower end of it. So we go to the calf area. So we have a picture here that's kind of nice. It shows us the back. The gastrocnemius and the soleus are the weak ones on the back that we talk about. The knee will have a few compartments. It's got a back compartment, a superficial back, then a deep back, a side compartment, and a front compartment. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so we're going to go to the superficial back compartment, the one on the surface. That's called the tricep sure muscle. And I like this picture, even though it's looking technical, but you see the attachments. You see the Gastrocnemius is the you see that muscle in the back, right? These two yeah. things in the back, like these these in Swiss German we call them vadli, kind of a yeah. weird word because they stick out in the bikers. Um, uh, and, yeah. yeah, right. They go from the Achilles tendon heel back back of the heel, all the way up to the above the knee. So this is above the knee on the inside and on the outside. Does that make sense? Yep. You throw. The insertion is the Achilles tendon or calcaneal tendon because the bone down there, we worked them, is the calcaneus, the heel bone. And the action is going to be pushing the foot, the sole of the foot into the ground. Yep. Make sense? Yeah. So these muscles are massive because they have to push your whole weight up when you go and stand on your toes. So if you stand on your toes and you have a cramp, you've got wimpy tricep surrey muscles. Oh. I know, you got to train them. Or stretch them, maybe. So the gastrocnemius is here. But another thing I need to point out is it, it crosses two joints. So when you look at the motion, it does also a little bit of knee, bring the knee up. Very little, or as a helper. And then underneath that muscle is the soleus. And this is the attachment of the soleus. So it goes underneath. This is the tibia on the back. This is the fibula on the side. And then it goes into the Achilles. And so the second muscle is the soleus, and the attachment is the posterior proximal tibial and fibula. Uh, the insertion is the same place, the Achilles tendon. That muscle only covers one joint, so it really is a very strong plantar flexor. Yeah. So the people like, I mean, a lot of blood. A lot of blood comes back to the heart as it goes through muscle. Because when the, when the heart pumps the blood, it pumps the blood so it goes to the organs, then it squeezes out, how's it going to get back? Mm -hmm. We don't know. No. So there's a few different ways. One way is the, mus the blood goes through the vessels inside the muscle. And when the muscle squeezes, it pushes the blood. It can push it both ways, but we have valves that go upward. Yeah. And they don't let the blood go back down towards gravity. So when the muscle squeezes, the blood gets pushed through the veins in one direction, mm -hmm. towards the heart. Make sense? Yes. And so, when you look at the garden in Rome, I like them as a Swiss guard, because they're Swiss military people, and Catholics, but also the British guard people in London, they stand still all day. What they have to do is they have to push their toes into the ground to activate the soleus muscle. That enough blood comes back up to the heart so they don't fall over because the blood wants to go down this yeah. gravity. It's kind of interesting. Anyway, that's that muscle. That's and, and combined the soleus and the gastrocnemius is called the triceps surrey. Here was the picture. But now this is a cool guy. Mm. The popliteus. And I thought I'd put it in there. Not you don't have to study that for the test, because it's a goofy. But this muscle starts at the outs it's looking from the back this is the back of the femur it goes on the outside of the back of the femur condyle 
and reaches around in the back and goes and attaches to the medial part, very high up on the, on the tibia, above actually the soleus. And what that does, it helps the, the tibia a little bit of internal rotation when he pulls this way. It turns the foot inward a little bit as you straighten out the femur. So it sort of helps stabilize the knee. That's what it really does. When you lock your knee, it stabilizes the knee. That muscle stabilizes the knee. Mm -hmm. So that's an interesting one to know that there it's there. It's called the popliteus. Why we, you know, it's a popliteal fossa back there. The name is making sense, but um, I, I like this. When you have a pain right back in here, it could be right that there. Okay, that's the trigger point. Okay, then that brings us to the anterior compartment. We got a few compartments left, and then we'll be good with this test here. I mean, this uh, section. The anterior 